Good afternoon and many thanks for making time this Friday. It is the 17th day of January 2014 and this is News Desk, where news is brought to you as it happens. Indeed, I hope you're enjoying your Friday. My name is Edith Kimani. Let's have a look at some of the stories we prepared for you this afternoon. JKI explosion scare. Loose bulb creates scare at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport. Cons for the old Mau Mau veterans targeted by conmen for compensation money. And the nominees are Lupita Nyong'o gets a nod for Oscar nomination. Welcome to the program. Operations were paralyzed at Unit 1 departure section of the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport after a reported explosion at the airport. The incident that occurred last night caused a commotion at the busy section of the airport as passengers and staff scampered for safety. Inspector General of Police David Kimayo, using his official Twitter handle, confirmed that the explosion was caused by an electric fault at the Java Coffee Shop in Unit 1 and that there was a no cause for alarm. Apparently the explosion was caused by a loose light bulb that fell into a dustbin causing a small fire. Private schools in Kajiado are now urging the government not to favor students from public schools in the ongoing Form 1 selection process. The teachers say the selection system adopted by the government is likely to demotivate teachers and students in private schools. <clears throat> School in Kajiado are a worried lot. The government has made public the method by which it shall allocate Form 1 places to candidates who start the 2013 Kenya Certificate of Primary Education examinations. The system favors public schools, putting candidates from private schools at a disadvantage. Private schools, teachers have really tried their best. And the proprietors also have invested a lot to see to it that private schools perform better. So the government is not fair. Candidates in public and private schools are set to fight for about 17,000 places available in 78 national secondary schools. According to the selection guidelines, a candidate who scored 350 marks from a public school stands a greater chance of joining a national school than his counterpart from a private school who scored 400 marks. The school is private, but the child is not private. So if a child, a, brave, a bright child is locked out because of the quota system that the government is applying, that one is making that child not have a right in education. It has emerged that nearly 200,000 pupils who sat the Kenya Certificate of Primary Education examinations last year will miss a place in secondary schools once the Form 1 selection process is completed. <laughs> <laughs> Parents now struggling to ensure that their children don't just secure places in secondary school but get a chance at the very best of schools. Wilkiston now for KTN. <laughs> Right, moving on to other matters. And last night, KTN highlighted the story of a woman who was forced to deliver a baby while standing. The baby then fell down and hit the floor head first, leading to its death. The Nyeri General Hospital confirmed that they were short of nurses, hence the poor services. However, speaking today, Nyeri Town Member of Parliament um, Esther Murugi says the situation at the hospital is wanting, confirming that most of the nurses at the hospital were poorly trained by senior nurses who have been serving for over 40 years. She further states that the health sector should not be completely devolved. And the baby had pooped on himself from the head to toe. So we called the nurse to give us hot water so that we could clean the baby. 
and the nurse told me hiyo si kazi yetu mama akijafugua hiyo ni kazi yake mtoto ni wake so i knew this was a disaster in waiting and i looked for the head nurse called her and i told her this lady cannot even turn you've given her the baby she can even sleep on the baby by mistake the beds are small they are sharing the same bed two women with babies so this is a disaster in her, uh, is waiting to happen and the problem is the nurses who are being trained there are being trained by people who have been in the provincial general hospital for the last 40 years they need to be moved and my take is the governors should not be uh, be given the national health they can only manage the dispensaries and the health centers not the national health From Nyeri County, let's have a look at what's happening in party politics, specifically the Orange Democratic Movement, where Irshad Sumra has declared his intention to run for position of organizing secretary of the Orange Democratic Movement. The Embakasi South legislator has dismissed his opponents, George Aladwa and Ruben Dolo, saying that the two have a past riddled with political scandals. Sumra added that the two did not manage to unite their supporters in order to secure their legislative seats in the 2013 election and therefore had no ability to unite the country. I am the most experienced parliament, a member of parliament in ODM in Nairobi. I've been in politics for the last 15 years. I fought for five elections. Apart from it, I've always been doing mobilizing. I've always been doing branding. I've been doing banners, t-shirts. I've, I've, I've contributed to a lot towards the party. Despite winning and then not getting the certificate nomination, I still did leave the party. We mean it damn well ODM Kabisa. Right, moving to other matters, the Nakuru County School Parents Committee have vowed to paralyze learning at the Majani Mingi School of a delayed school construction project. Now, the project, which comprises of classes, toilets, and administration block, is said to have taken longer than expected, with some of the construction classes reported to be substandard. The parents say the construction of the toilets has not yet started a situation that puts the students' health at risk, as the older toilets are in a pathetic condition. The parents' committee led the pupils in a demonstration over what they called as delayed construction of school structures, adding that some of the work done, especially the classes, is substandard. The school is said to have received 8.1 million shillings from the government to improve on the school's condition after it faced an influx of children from Mao evictees. <laughs> Hata, hata, hati sasa tuko na nairekea miesi kumi na moja muratu uchaisha madarasa menye manana haichaisha according to the parents the influx of the students who faced lack of enough classes has affected the performance saying a class holds up to 120 pupils and that the new classes were meant to ease the congestion to enable easier learning for the pupils na tutaki watoto ya etu wanguke tena sahi watoto wameanza syllabus Wetu wawajaanza kwa sababu wamefinyana kwa madarasa. Watoto 90 kwa class 8. Watatoboa. Walimu wako. Lakini wanaingia wa wili, wili kwa madarasa. Mwaja anasimama kando, mwingine anafunza. Hawa watoto tisaini watasikia chochote. The parents also fear for the children's lives, saying the toilets which were meant to cater for the pupils after school resume were not yet ready. Misala oh, hafi ya naeza kuja kufunga chule wakati wote. Na hiko vyo imechumba hapa hata mutaziona. Hiko ingine zimekoregoa hapo mbili, Na hii ndio bada imefungwa chuma. Kwa hivyo tunataka wakuja wa tuwelese, ni kitu gani kinaendelea. Tunataka watoto wa, wa inge kwa, kwa cho. Na cho hakuna, zilijaa zote. Zenye zilichimbwa ni atari hata kwa watoto wetu wa class 1. Ni mashima ziku funikwa. But according to Rongai District Education Officer Anthony Makori, the parents' judgment has come too early, saying the work is yet to be completed as the craftsman had been involved in an accident, bringing the work to a standstill and were currently looking for a way forward. We are to contact the, 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 the Kanban, who are willing to give somebody else. But you see, he had not paid some some workers on the ground, so he wanted him to be there personally to come and assist him, assist him, even if who was paid and who was not paid. 
for the work that was done before he was involved in an accident. Following the standoff at the school, a situation that the DEO claimed to be unaware has however promised to call for a meeting to address the issue. Elsewhere, 15 South Sudanese were today rescued at Lanet Division in Nakuru County after being spotted stranded by local authorities in the area. The 15 South Sudanese, Sudanese were, who were said to have fled their war-torn country arrived in Nakuru Town aboard a Nairobi-bound bus. They were handed over to the police after they were found without proper documentation. The 15 South Sudanese nationals are said to have traveled from Kakma where they had pitched camp following the fighting in their country. It is alleged that one one of their own who happens to have lived in Kenya since the year 2011 helped to get them into the country. Residents who spotted them stranded in Nakuru alerted the police who contacted the immigration office. Only one of them had a refugee ID from Kakma. They are expected to be transported back to Kakma for registration. Right, and Kenya is the largest constituency in Nyeri County, yet with the poorest infrastructure. There have been calls to upgrade the roads so as to boost agriculture in the area, which is the main economic activity in the region. Currently, foods such as potatoes, cabbage, carrots and onions have been going to waste in Kiani due to bad roads. This happens while the commissioning of the Miyogo Wasonyiro Road, funded by a French farm agency, uh, Agency Francois Development, at the tune of 40 million. Kenny legislator Kanini Kega said that the youth should be incorporated in development projects in the area, such as the construction of feeder roads, as they are under the county governments. He said that the central government should then see to it that the main roads are in good condition. And for sure, for those who know this road, is, uh, is actually the backbone of Ken West. The up, the up areas are in uh, and Russia are very, very productive. And of course, uh, uh, food have, has been going to waste, basically because of um, the very poor state of the road. We have so many feeder roads that are impassable. For the main roads, I think it will be better if it is left for the national government and also uh, for us when we are chipping in in terms of the CDF and all that. But the county government should concentrate on the feeder loads and they should clearly mark them. Whatever they are going to uh, do any work, they should actually uh, put a notification that this is being done by the county government. The national government on our part will also do uh, similar. The Mau Mau War Veterans Association faction led by Elijah Kinua alias General Bahati has cautioned freedom fighters against falling for the tricks um, of uh, falling for tricks rather employed by conmen who are going around soliciting for money under the pretext of considering them for phase two of the compensation process. Speaking at the Mau Mau office in Rorengo, the leaders also asked the government to consider increasing money paid out to the elderly in the country as there are many who are languishing in abject poverty. The veterans mourned freedom fighter General uh, Kimbo who passed on earlier this week. They said that Mau Mau heroes are not accorded the respect they deserve during their burials as only a handful of leaders turn up for their funerals. Ndiyo kampuni ya wingereza ambao pia imetambuliwa rasmi na ni kwa nini ni kwa sababu mara ya kwanza kulikuwa na kasoro kwa hivyo ikawa tutaandikisha watu watu wote bila pingamizi yoyote kwa hivyo mambo yote yanaenda vizuri kwa kuwa kulikuwa una, una udanganyifu mkubwa wapo siku za mwanzo kwa hivyo tunao matumaini makubwa serikali ambaye naongozwa na uhuru mwigai Na ile ilipiti chwa pile tulikuwa nauliza serikali yetu itutede ilipitizwa ya juzi. Kwa hivyo mtu badu kuweka kidole ni raizi mwenyewe. Akiweka kidole, bas, tupate mare hiyo pade ake. Upande wa serikali ya Kenya ni machaba tena hiko pale. Watu wangu wapeo machamba, mana, wagini hawana pale ya kusiku kama na kufa. 
Teachers and academicians in Nigeria have expressed concern over the erosion of official standard English in preference to pidgin. Those who speak and support pidgin say that it is the glue that is increasingly binding disparate communities in Nigeria. But scholars insist pidgin is encouraging what they call lazy language habits among the youth. Your own, they know they think come. Wazobia FM is one of Nigeria's top radio stations and broadcasts only in Pidgin, which is a mixture of English and elements of local languages. Radio presenters here effortlessly translate the day's newspaper headlines from English into Pidgin. To reach the common man easily, you must speak in the language that they understand. Break it down. Standard English is Nigeria's official language, but it is seen by many as elitist and is spoken mainly in urban areas. English teachers are in a dilemma trying to stop the influence of Pigeon English. They prefer using the Pigeon English because, like we said, it, it's understandable to them more. So, yes, it's, I, I find it difficult most of times correcting their expressions because it it's, breaks a lot of things. It breaks the English language too much that it um, destroys their written English as well as their spoken English. But standard English is not the only language that is facing stiff competition from Pigeon. Even major Nigerian languages like Igbo, Hausa and Yoruba are seen as being under threat. At this school, pupils learning Igbo are being given a helping hand by new technology. It is not only an application designed to make learning languages fun, but also helps safeguard Nigeria's linguistic diversity. Scholars, you know, historians, even government officials are talking about, you know, the, the fact that, you know, these languages are in a sense going into extinction, you know, so it's, it, I mean, it's a prevalent problem. And so for us, it's, you know, just contributing in our own ways, you know, to addressing this issue. For Australia, we yesterday not still done the TII now. As well as uniting different language communities around a common language, Pidgin is a class leveler spoken by everybody from taxi drivers to business executives. Pidgin is now thought to be the most widely spoken language in Nigeria, with many having no option but accommodating it. Patrick Amimo, KTN. Just before this bulletin began, Tunya and I were talking about the rising star Lupita Nyong'o. Yes. He was very quick to tell me that she's from a region in Nyanza Same province called she's Seme. Called, yeah. You've seen a lot of people now on Facebook say, my name is Edith Kimani, home district Seme. <laughs> That's where the stars come from. And so this I went to school in Seme. Oh dear God. I'm just pointing it out. It's okay. true. Okay, I'm just going to allow him to continue. But clearly, <laughs> this next story is one that has brought the Nyanza region of Kenya into the world headlines again, just about six years after Barack Obama did. Now, Lupita Nyong'o, daughter of Kisumu Senator Professor Peter Anyang Nyong'o, has been nominated for the prestigious Oscars. And as Sharon Momanya reports, the Latin world is claiming this moment as their own too. Here's the Story. Thank you so much for your kind words. Lupites is a name that is now on more Kenyans' lips than that of other international stars, maybe even more than that of your local member of parliament. I went to Master Charles Plantation. She stood out for her role in the 2013 movie 12 Years a Slave, where she plays the role of Patsy, a slave girl who is viciously beaten and raped. Lupita executed the role with such skill and emotion that have now won her accolades and prizes. 500 pounds of cotton, day in, day out, more than any man here. She recently won the New Hollywood Award and got nominated for the Screen oh, Actors God. Guild Award, Day Golden Globe Award, British Academy Film Mary. Awards and Academy Day Awards, Day all in various categories. My first rehearsal, Michael Fassbender turned to me and said, you are my peer. And standing here now, I truly feel that. Lupita was also recognized as among the best dressed in the 2014 Golden Globes Awards held a few days ago. And now, Kenya's Golden Girl has received yet another coveted recognition, getting an Oscar nomination for the Best Supporting Actress category, this catapulting her name higher up the crop of celebrated Hollywood stars. She has been nominated for this particular award alongside Hollywood stars Julia Roberts, Jennifer Lawrence, Sally Hawkins, and June Squibb. The 2014 Oscars is scheduled for March 2nd. Accomplish my dream. 
Lupita, who is the daughter of Kisumu Senator Professor Anyang Nyongo, was born in Mexico City 30 years ago, at a time when her family was taking political refuge there. She came back to Kenya with her family when she was just under a year old and went back to America for her studies, graduating from the Yale School of Drama. Incidentally, she is now also just as much celebrated in Latin America, where she was born and got her first name. Sharon Momani, KTN. It's time to wind up this edition of KTN News Desk. Remember, the website to look out for is www.standardmedia.co.ke. There's a story about a mystery that happened was at the, at the JKIA right, where a body right. was found right. um, and a car sprayed with bullets. All the information is on that website. Today, right, and now that uh, did it, you know fact? It, it is back. I have the <laughs> unsolicited pleasure of uh, reading this. Now, did you know, this is a story from, started from the bottom, now we are here. Louis Vuitton, the big fashion name, was originally hired by Napoleon III to carry his wife's luggage. You're so funny. Source of inspiration. My name is Edith Kimani. Have a great weekend. My name is Bonitunya. We'll see you again at 9 o'clock for business.